there, I'm Sonal Merotra Kapoor and welcome to Coffee and Crypto. First, I have to say thank you for all the love you have given us in the launch episode. You guys had so many inputs about what you want to see in this program and all of that is duly noted. Talking about today's episode then, well, we'll be taking you through some ABC on how to get started on watching out for coins. We'll talk about that in our explainer, but first, let's take you through the crypto highlights of this week. Cryptocurrency Bill of India is already in awaiting clearance, says Finance Minister. India ranks second in the world in crypto adoption. And PayPal launches crypto buying and selling in the UK. Alright, so by now you know what is crypto, you know how to get started on your crypto journey, how to make an account, etc. But now while on it, how do you differentiate between coins? How do you tell one coin different from the other, which is a good coin to really bet on? Well, that is what we are going to decode for you in today's explainer. So let's get to our coffee wall. Okay, so I've got, I hope you've got your coffee ready as well, because now what I'm going to tell you is going to change the way you look at coins altogether. To start with, let's give you an analogy. You know, like there is the stock market, while investing in stocks, you watch out for these things. You see the credentials of the company, you see the balance sheet of the company, expansion plans and all of that, market cap, etc., etc. So in the crypto world, how do you reach different coins? Now, it's not that difficult if you are reading the fundamentals of the coin, right? So make it easy for you to understand what we've done is we've got four basic pillars that should be the basis of how you're reading coins. So let's start with our first filler. What is the coin's purpose? Now, unlike what a lot of people think, not all coins are the same. Every coin is designed for a specific purpose. For example, Bitcoin is designed to function as a currency. It is created to allow online payments to be made directly without any financial institution. Ethereum, on the other hand, goes beyond that. It just doesn't decentralize the banks, but it has decentralized apps, services. You can build a smart contracts, NFTs, and a lot of other things on that platform. And this is because the technology is slightly different. And it is also faster, quicker, more scalable. Another popular coin is Tether. Now, this is what is called a stable coin. And it is just that. It is more stable because it is tied to another asset. In Tether's case, the asset is the US dollar. So one Tether is designed to be worth one US dollar. And this also means there is less fluctuation and less volatility in this space. Now, wondering how do I know all this? Well, that's because I just read the white paper of these coins. And so should you. What is a white paper? Well, it is simply a document that outlines why the coin was generated and what is the problem the coin intends to solve. This is the most important pillar in the entire explainer. But having understood that, let's move to the second one, which is about the background and credentials of the team behind the coin. Now, Bitcoin is an anomaly since nobody really knows who Santoshi Nakamoto is. But that's not the case with several other cryptocurrencies. So when you are thinking about investing in a, to uh, in a coin altogether, look into who are the people backing it. Who are the co-founders? Who wrote the white paper? Again, for example, many major organizations are experimenting with Ethereum's blockchain. A consortium called Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which includes companies like Microsoft, JP Morgan, they are developing uses of the Ethereum blockchain. Again, a company called Tether Limited controls Tether. It is responsible for its management, its supply, keeping the reserves, issuing tokens, and thus maintaining a stable price. Once you are convinced about pillar number one, pillar number two, move to pillar number three, which is the market cap of the coin. Now, market capitalization or a market cap is the total value of the coins that have been mined or generated. Its calculation is quite simple. You just multiply the number of coins in circulation by the current market price of a single coin. 
Now see, this is important. Why? Because price alone of a single coin should not be your deciding factor on whether or not you're investing in that crypto. A lot of people I know who are new to crypto might get tempted to buy a coin that's at a low price. But that's not advisable. Market cap will help you see if the price has been inflated. For instance, if you see a coin with low daily volume but a high market capitalization, it's most likely to be manipulated. This manipulation, by the way, is called pump and dump. Now, pumping and dumping, that's a new thing that you've learned today, really cool to use as well. So, thank you. But what exactly is it? It's when developers actually buy a large quantity, so they are pumping the price. But as soon as the price reaches the peak, they dump the coin. So, talking about PND brings me to the all important pillar number four. And this is going to be important because this is your support group. This is your coin family. This is your community. Now, remember, I told you that trading volume, the higher the volume, the more solid base you have. All that means that when more people are involved, the coin community is thriving. There will be better returns. There will be more thriving as well. Because the coin community will be built by people who believe in the coin, believe in its future, this will have people like investors, developers, beginners, old timers, everybody e-connecting to discuss what exactly are the various issues with the coin and what exactly, again, is it that it plans to achieve. Now, unlike the process of writing a code, the creation of a crypto community is not an algorithm, remember. The crypto community is a living phenomenon. It's the heart and soul of what keeps these coins running and thus all innovations and that is happening in this space will come out of here. So I hope you made notes over there because these four pillars will go a long way in identifying good coins, potential coins, thriving coins from all the bad ones. All right then, having understood that, let's take this conversation forward with our guests now. Joining us uh, on CC this week is Rohas Nagpal. He's the author of Future Money uh, Playbook, Chief Blockchain Architect for Wrapped Asset Project as well. Also joining us for a legal perspective on the show is going to be Uday Valia. He's the lawyer partner at uh, Touchstone Partners. All right, Rohas, let's begin with you first. Just explain to our viewers, you know, the basic pillars of how to get started on your crypto journey and how to watch out for coins. What, according to you, is the most important thing one must keep in mind just starting out on the crypto journey? Sure. So, uh, one thing that you must remember is there are primarily three types of cryptos. One, what we call as the medium of exchange, something which you could use as money. So, mm -hmm. a Bitcoin or a Dogecoin could be an example of that. The second would be utility coins, which are going to fuel use cases. So, something mm -hmm. like an Ether, ETH comes into that. Mm -hmm. And the third type is a stable coin something which is pegged to a fiat currency like the dollar or the yen. Hmm. So that's one thing that everyone must understand. Right. And, you know, we talked about that in the explainer as well, but important to have that distinction very clear in your head and what exactly are you investing in. So it's great to hear that from you. Uday, let me come to you. And let me first talk about the elephant in the room over here. Everybody is very kicked about the statement that recently came out. Uh, by the finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman said that she's already uh, with a crypto bill, which is now awaiting cabinet approval. But as we wait for that, as we wait for more clarity on that front, for people just getting started and list still a little edgy perhaps about what kind of control perhaps or what kind of regulation surrounds crypto in India, what do you want to tell them? Well, the trouble is that the government has done a bit of a flip-flop. So they haven't quite decided what they want to do. In 2018, they decided they wanted to regulate it. In mm -hmm. 2019, we saw a draft bill where they wanted to ban it altogether. The Reserve Bank of India... Now, look, the Reserve Bank of India will have an adverse position on this because the whole point about cryptos is to exclude central banks. So, mm -hmm. you know, you'd expect the Reserve Bank of India to have an adverse, but the Reserve Bank of India in 2018 issued a circular where essentially they tried to stifle... Um, uh, financial transactions in virtual currency. They didn't ban it altogether. Hmm. That was then set aside by the Supreme Court, which said that, look, you need to demonstrate the harm that is done to banking institutions as a result of um, 
as a result of uh, the, the you know access to the banking system. Now, the government hopefully is going to try and regulate it because you can't stifle tech, you know, te- te- technological innovation. So mm. you must encourage it. Now, the government likes likes the blockchain aspect of it. So this whole mm. public ledger stuff. Mm. And in the bill that we saw in 2019, they said, we want to ban cryptocurrencies, but we love the... Um, um, the, the 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 public ledger stuff and this might be available for use now you can't mm. have it both ways you can't you can't say well i like certain aspects of the technology but i don't like certain aspects now we also know that there are legitimate concerns around cryptocurrency for uh, terrorist financing for money mm. laundering all of that needs to be addressed but you can't you can't try and ban it hmm. push it all into the black market you know, and just hold on to that thought and you know the, one of the reasons why i wanted you and rohas together in this conversation is exactly this you want to get an legal point of view and we also then want to understand technically how that is going to play out rohas do you want to respond to that about the concerns about this actually being used for all the wrong reasons Sure. So actually my introduction to Bitcoin happened in 2010 when I was helping one of the law enforcement agencies to investigate a case of how the drug mafia was using crypto. I see. So yes, definitely the uses of crypto started with the illegal world where we had Silk Road, Hmm. which way back in 2010-11 did a billion dollars of transactions Hmm. simply on Bitcoin, selling all sorts of illegal stuff. But you know, a lot has changed. In fact, today the savvy criminals don't use Bitcoin because that's a pseudo-anonymous crypto and they use privacy coins like Monero, Decreed, Zcash. But yes, there is a very legitimate fear that a lot of the privacy coins can be misused for money laundering as well as financing terrorism and crime. So Mm -hmm. I do get that. But again, remember that only applies to medium of exchange cryptos. There are a lot of very good use cases. When we talk about stable coins and utility coins, right. it's next to impossible to misuse those. Right. And this is actually circling back to our explainer of the day where we told people, you know, read the white paper, understand what is the problem the coin is trying to solve. And all of that plays such an important role in understanding what you're putting your money on, actually. On that note, let's take the first viewer question that we've got on the program. Let's play that out. Hi, my name is Vailar Abhishek and I am currently a second year student here at IIM Udaipur. Cryptos are considered the next big thing or a thing of the future. That's because of the underlying technologies that these cryptocurrencies have. I wanted to get your opinion on when these technologies would become mainstream. Like we've seen adoption from Ecuador and a lot of interest coming in from big banks as well. When will they become mainstream? Rohas, you want to take that? Actually, they are already mainstream. A few years ago, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India set up the DND system on a blockchain. And this happened years ago. Hmm. And even now, when we look at it, uh, some of the state governments are using blockchain for the COVID vaccine passports. So I'd say they're fairly mainstream already. Hmm. It's just that the normal user doesn't hear of the technology. Hmm. So they don't realize, but blockchain is almost everywhere today. Wow, that's uh, quite an eye-opener for uh, everyone here, including me. Let's play out the next question, please. My name is Rahul Tejanavar, and I'm currently an undergraduate studying liberal studies. My question is, considering the decentralization and the anonymity of transaction of cryptocurrencies, if legalized, how do the institutions plan on keeping a check on illegitimate financial actions, such as funding for terrorism, money laundering, etc. It all coming back to that or they answer that? You know, I think the answer is technology. So hmm. the, the, the way to deal with all of this stuff is to try and regulate it and use technology to find those answers. It's, it's not just the case that, look, you can use cash to buy uh, a, a Bitcoin and that Bitcoin can then be used to buy some sort of illegal Hmm. weapons or equipment or whatever it is. Hmm. Um, you, you can even do that today. I mean, cash exists. There is a medium of exchange that exists today, but you have to use. So like with cash, you're trying to, you ban cash. You, you don't ban cash. Sorry. You, you try and regulate the use of cash. Cash over a certain threshold requires a PAN card. You try and make sure that there are wire transfers for all of those proceedings. There's a PAN hmm. card. There's all of that stuff. Hmm. You have to try and use the entire ecosystem and technology to try and make sure that this particular system does exist. How do we make sure that there is adequate anti-money laundering, adequate KYC systems in Mm. place to make sure that 
that it isn't used for the things that we keep hearing about. There's a lot of good stuff that you hmm. can use bitcoins for. So it's, I mean, not least, you can buy it, Tesla. It's cars. good tech versus bad tech, ethical hackers versus the bad ones. That's really where it's really boiling all to. I have last few minutes on this. So let me go back to Rohas on a question. You know, uh, Rohas, I got another question, and this was on social media, and so many people keep talking about it, that there's this entire talk about how coins are decentralized right so nobody's riding them etc but one tweet by elon musk can escalate the price of a particular coin or dump it on the other hand as well so how does it really play out and what should be the source of information really that one is banking on when it comes to looking at the future of a coin so first of all, I'd like to say cryptos are not as decentralized as people would like to believe it. Hmm. And in fact, most cryptos are controlled by people that we call as whales. That's a very small group of people who controls it. Hmm. And yes, some of the cryptos, especially the meme coins, they rely heavily upon social media. Hmm. So in fact, you have a lot of charts which show you how YouTube or Reddit or other social media actually impacts the price of cryptos on a minute to minute basis. Hmm. But you know what? That's even true of the stock markets. There are certain really popular people and when they talk about certain stocks, that also moves mm. in. So mm. I think cryptos are very similar to that. But because cryptos overall are a very small market, mm. barely $2 trillion, so they are even more susceptible to this. But yeah, that's, that's a known thing. Cryptos are not very decentralized and yeah. they rely heavily upon social media. So there is influencing that happens on this yeah. front as well. And what it's perhaps one, one keeps needs to keep in mind is that, you know, be here in the long run maybe because that's going to really sort out a lot of issues for you instead of just waiting to make some quick money over there. I'm sorry, Uday wanted to come in. You know, I'm just saying that, you know, and I think as, as Ron touched upon it, I mean, Elon Musk also tweeted that he was going to take his company private. Hmm. Um, that led to a massive uh, uh, swing in his, in his share yeah. price. He was, he was fine. So hmm. the reason why insider trading and all those regulations exist is to try and ensure that there is a level playing field. Now, there's no reason why you can't adopt the same um, uh, with respect to cryptocurrencies. The other thing is tax. And let's not forget that the government should be interested in taxing uh, all of these products. Because if a cryptocurrency is property, there should be capital gains tax on the upside hmm. of a Bitcoin when you go on to sell that Bitcoin. Hmm. So, you know, there are various advantages of, of trying to regulate it, not least tax. And that's certainly something that the government should be doing. All right. Is the government listening? Well, we'll have to wait for the next session of parliament, perhaps, for that. That's when the finance minister says it will be tabled. So let's see what happens on that front for the moment. Thank you both for joining us on CC. All right, Rohas and Uday, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you again on CC very soon. But with that, it's time for a very short break. But don't go anywhere because enough about experts. Let's listen in to crypto investors. Joining us is Shruti. And let's hear what's her story. brand new destination for all things crypto okay it's that time on the on the program which i personally love the most this is that segment where we interact with crypto investors and i get to hear all these fascinating stories of what happened when they initially started with their crypto journey and where has it gone so far so joining us today is shruti hi shruti how are you welcome to coffee and crypto hi sonil thank you so much all right, so this just take us through firstly, how did you get introduced to the world of crypto? How long back was that? Uh, this was about one and a half year back uh, around Bali when everyone on Twitter was talking about uh, cryptocurrency and a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that we follow were talking about uh, cryptocurrency. So that got me a little curious to experiment. And uh, I remember downloading an app and I started with a small amount of 5-10 thousand rupees at that time. I even got my father to uh, invest because we were both just playing around. Uh, and that's how it started uh, also because you know a lot of people were talking about oh, how quickly they are making money and then suddenly the whole conversation changed to oh, how quickly they were losing money. 
Uh, so you know, like this sounded a little interesting as a marketing floor, and that's how uh, I started my. So it sort of started with a game of gamble. Like everybody likes yeah, to gamble on Diwali. You thought, let's put a gamble on crypto and let's see where it goes. So tell me, where that's are right. you? Where are you now? How are you seeing the crypto space at the moment? Also, uh, from how I started to where I'm now over one and a half year, I think uh, I'm much more mature about my investments. I'm not playing around with my money anymore uh, because even the scale of my investment has uh, risen like uh, tremendously. It's scaled up over the over time. Um, I have become uh, I, at least I've started to understand that crypto is not an investment that you make to make like money overnight. And I do not like pull out my money. It's more become like a investment asset class for me, where I make a dedicated investment every month. I have like a monthly SIP uh, that I invest. I do my research on my own. I try to understand the technology of what I'm investing rather than depending. Ki ha, isne bol diya, isne dal do, isne bol diya, isne dal do. So it's not a lot of your say anymore. Monthly uh, SIP on crypto. Wow, that's like a lot of dedication to taking out a huge chunk of money. And saying I'm not going to spend it on shopping, not going to even invest it anywhere else, but actually put it in crypto. Tell me, what is the family's reaction? You told me earlier that your father started investing as well, right? Is he now telling you be yeah. careful, or whenever you hear about Bitcoin going up or other coins going up, you say, oh, make money, get out of the market. You don't know what's going to happen. Is that a chatter at the house as well? No, my father has also started investing in cryptocurrency after me. Uh, but my mother, I think, all she understands is when a mainstream media says that Bitcoin's market crash has happened, unko bas utna samajh aata hai. Uh, when she looks at it, and, and I know like a lot of normal calls where she'd be like, "Oh, your Bitcoin is today very high." And uh, yeah, but I think uh, when you when you become uh, more of an investor rather than a trader who's trading on day-to-day -day basis, because crypto yeah. is something that you invest in for a long period of time. Uh, so these kind of daily movements stop affecting you. I don't even track daily movements. Well, thanks, Shruti, and good luck. for your time in the crypto space all right so you heard from a crypto investor you heard from experts you heard what are the headlines we give you some gyan in our explainer as well what's left well what's left is what's trending in the space right now and well arun's here to take you through that as per a security firm trend micro google play has removed eight deceptive cryptocurrency apps These apps would trick users, masquerading as cloud mining apps, where users can earn cryptocurrency by investing money into a cloud mining operation. The list of the apps is right here. The firm says that such apps run bogus activities via local mining simulation module that includes a counter and some random functions. Two of these apps were even paid. But how can you spot a fake crypto app? Here is a quick guide. First, try and enter the cryptocurrency wallet address on these apps. Usually, apps do not have a check for the wallet address as they don't link to them and thus tend to accept even an invalid wallet address too, revealing that the app is bogus. Second, carefully read the app's reviews. Now, five-star reviews can be paid and fake. Pay more attention to one-star reviews. Restart the app or phone while it is in the process of mining. Most mining actions for fake apps are just simulated with local counters. This means that if a device is restarted after mining starts, the system will forcibly clear the counter, resetting it to zero. Lastly, confirm if there is a withdrawal fee. The transfer of cryptocurrency requires a handling fee. Free withdrawals are very suspicious. So be safe. Over to you, Sonal. All right, thanks Arun for that. Well, that's all we could pack in this edition of CC. Thank you so much for watching. If you have comments, you can always write to us with simply the hashtag Crypto with NDTV, and we'll read all your comments. Until next time, this is Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Bye for now.